What's up, everybody? Welcome to the State of Wild, episode 104, a regular YouTube video web series podcast thingy. My name is Meowth, and as usual, I'm joined by my two good friends and co-hosts, Raffle and Corbett. How are you guys doing tonight? Uh, you know, I'm doing all right. Things have uh, settled since uh, murder at Castle Nathria, and it seems that they settled uh, rather top-heavy uh, in terms of the class and uh, deck distribution that we've been seeing. Uh, I'm sure we'll be talking about that. We'll also be talking about potential fixes, maybe? Hopefully? Um... Uh, we do have announced changes, but we're not sure about all of the details as of recording this just yet, but uh, still excited for that. I'm exhausted, Meowth. I uh, I don't know why. I haven't gotten a good night's sleep in like three days. Uh, I feel like I've got these massive rings under my eyes. So, you know, maybe talk about some of these nerfs. It's going to uh, perk me right up. Yeah, excited for that, then. Uh, the, the medicine that you're going to need. Um, but we are recording this on Sunday, so we technically, uh, like Ruffle mentioned, do not have detailed patch notes yet those those will be coming out on monday um and so let's just hop into it okay uh, apparently we talked last week about how there was a normally a patch plan for two weeks after an expansion launched we are getting a patch on tuesday uh they have apparently something happened and some of it was pushed live early and so a lot of the changes got leaked a little bit and so the aleko who's kind of the lead on the balance team which is like all right yes these the things that you saw some of them were real uh and did confirm some balance patches or balance changes and so let's run through the ones that we know about are confirmed um and then we'll just talk about them individually so via library this is the uh the warlock location uh loses the base plus one plus one so it'll give stats equal to the number of imps you control not imps plus one uh stag spirit wild seed this is the uh the th dormant for three turns that gives you the weapon uh, now, instead of giving you a 4-2 weapon, we'll give you a 3-2 weapon. Uh, the big one here, uh, Snowfall Guardian, becomes base 5-5, five five, but no longer grows based on the minions frozen. So a really big change that we'll be diving into. Uh, another one, Celestial Alignment, will no longer affect the opponent. Another really, really interesting one that we'll talk about. And we did get a one one wild specific change. We got, we got a one for the expansion. Uh, Cobalt Illusionist. Uh, will now cost five mana uh, very notable here because it can no longer be drawn off of sketchy information um, and then in addition to all of these nerfs they're going to be doing a very substantial number of buffs uh, these are the ones that we don't have a lot of details on um, and so we're not going to know about these until monday uh, but he did mention two of them so edwin so this is the edwin that is currently in standard that draws you a card and then gets buffed if you play the card that you drew uh, is going to get buffed to a three mana three three and Relic Vault, the Demon Hunter location, uh, is getting buffed from three mana to two. And so what they said, what he said was, Paladin, Demon Hunter, and Warrior Fan should have a lot to look forward to because these are the three classes that are kind of just dead in standard. Um, so the buffs hopefully will revitalize those classes in Wild as well. One quick addition: this is this wasn't confirmed by Aleko, but like people had recorded game footage of uh, both Bibliomite and. Um, magnifying glaive getting plus one attack so bibliomite is the uh two mana four four will be a two mana five four that uh throws a card back into your deck and uh magnifying glaive will now be a three two weapon supposedly this could be subject to change but people saw it in game and there's confirmation that things that we're seeing in game are what is anticipated for the patch so soft confirmed not hard confirmed like the others yeah. Wait, those are those are really nice though, if they are actually real. Um all right, let's do let's do nerfs first, because these are kind of the big ones. Uh let's start with the wild specific change first. Let's talk about Cobalt Illusionist. Um so we mentioned last week that Big Rogue had kind of burst onto the scene at the last second. It was looking really good, it was looking kind of spooky, it was creating a lot of stats really early in the game. These are decks that tend to get hit really, really quickly, uh, when it comes to wild balance changes, and it did get changed really quickly. Cobalt Illusions now will cost five. Like I mentioned earlier, the big change here is that it will no longer get drawn off of that sketchy information. Yeah, I think that this was kind of an expected change after things started developing past the you know few days that we had going into when we recorded last week. And you know we were just kind of flat out wrong that uh, Nepshalon was the enabler in this. Um, it kind of appeared that that was the the thing that was making it strong early, but then like more refined lists started popping up that were just running like the Stoneboard General and the Mass Reveler 
in addition to the uh, the Cobalt Illusionist as just like a six minion package, and that seemed to be the way to build it. It was incredibly reliable. You could get more stats and more power and more attack on online with more resilience than uh, just like cheating out an early Neptulon. Neptulon, you know, while giving you that quick 24 damage hit on the follow-up is incredibly fragile in comparison to some of those other minions. So it just kind of seemed like the the heavy death rattle package was the, the way to go. And obviously if a deck is able to be, whether it's more successful or not, it's as successful, probably more successful, um, and more optimized without Neptulon, clearly Neptulon isn't the problem. The problem uh, seemed to be the ease at which they could get it online, which is in part due to Snowfall uh, Graveyard plus the sketchy information. Like, you draw those two cards together, you win most games. Um, and if that interaction is the um, is sort of the culprit, it's, you know, moving Illusionist to five is a pretty straightforward way to solve that problem, not only in the short term, but also like long term, it uh, creates, you know, uh, it solves the problem. I don't know that things are going to get more outrageous than they are right now with Big Rogue, because unless you get more like spell cheats, like you're not going to get online any faster than turn two or three. Um, this is for me very reminiscent of um, the brief interaction that we had with uh, Big Shaman. Uh, where there was an old card that was enabling the deck to get online very quickly, faster than it should be, um, and like adjusting that interaction for a wild specific card sort of solved the problem and brought it back to a much more fair deck. I've been seeing a lot of rumbling about, well, why isn't that happening with uh, Big Priest and in particular Illuminate? And I think there is an argument to be made for that, but I, the main difference is just like, flat out the win rate. The win rate is just like astronomically higher for, well, not astronomical. The, the win rate for Big Rogue and in the past Big Shaman is like above and beyond what the Big Priest is capable of right now. And part of that is just the consistency and the success rate. Like you remember the times when Illuminate hits Shadow Essence and you get, you know, bodied on turn three or, or turn two. But like, that's a regular occurrence in, in Big Rogue at a rate that is just not reasonable in in Big Priest because of the fact that you are running so many so many spells. I think that there may be some still some problems with Big Priest, and I think it's like something that I personally would like to see addressed. But like, it's not the same because of like because if it were the same, we would see the win rates indicating that it is the same, and we would see the play rates skyrocket in a way that we saw with both Big Priest, or Big, sorry, Big Shaman, and now recently Big Rogue, where there's just like this trail and then exponential growth as uh, as people started to catch on because the deck was performing so well. Like, when something is broken, it becomes very, very prevalent very, very quickly, and in both cases, that happened. So, that's my long rant. And I'm done. <laughs> um, I'm actually a little bit surprised uh, that we did get this change um, just because I didn't think the timing like I thought the timing was going to make it super close um, as to whether it was going to happen or not because this deck basically took off um, uh, what day is it today it took off uh, around like Tuesday um, it's kind of like when because like we recorded the podcast I believe on the Monday for, for me personally and then um, like after that after that uh, after after the recording, I uh, joined a Discord call with a whole bunch of other players, and uh, we ended up all just playing Big Rogue, a top twenty legend, and refining and posting it on Twitter. And um, that was, so the issue was like they probably decided what they wanted to do for nerfs and buffs by like Tuesday or Wednesday, right? Because they have to like do the whole localization thing like later in the week, and then like everything has to be done by the weekend, and then the patch notes go out on the Monday, Tuesday. So there was probably only like a forty eight hour window where this could have been looked at decided it was going to be nerfed, and then actually nerfed. And for Wild, I was like, I don't know if they're going to do it. Like, the threshold is so high for when they want to make a change in Wild that if there's, like, a 48-hour window, I, I felt like there was just not really a very high chance that it was going to happen. So, first of all, surprised. Somewhat surprised that they're actually doing this. Um, very happy that they're doing this. I think the Big Rogue was disgusting. Um, I think it was so oppressive against anything that wanted to moderately play for board um 
I think that the 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 win rate of the deck against things like Warlock, uh, against things like uh, you know like Even Shaman, I suppose. Uh, although Even Shaman, I guess, with Devolve might be a little better. But uh, basically, like any anything that was conventionally played to the board that wasn't like a Pillager, a Quest Mage, a Free Shaman, an Alignment Druid, anything like that, anything that actually wanted to develop onto the board was just going to get hit with eight eights on turn three. Like a whole board, like forty damage on turn three it was like very very normal. Um, not even like the most insane. You can have a play session of five games, you gotta do it at least once. So, I think there's a big difference between this and Big Priest. Uh, I know that I've seen a lot of people making the comparison, the complaints. Um, I'm not like a massive Big Priest defender, like the Illuminate interaction I do think is kind of BS, but it's levels, right? Like, there's levels to this. And I think that, um, Big Rogue definitely hit the popularity, power, uh, play pattern concerns. The big three that something like Big Shaman hit previously. And that's why they immediately had to step in, just because it was so oppressive, it was so good, and it was just dominating anything that wants to play for board. And I think that, like, anything in Wild that heavily, it, like, punishes people for even trying to play for board is really bad, because a lot of decks in the format already are trying to gear you away from, like, you know, playing interactive stuff, and it's very solitaire-based. And so, um, you know, you don't want more punishment towards uh you know minion combat in this format i think yeah i think there's also a really important distinction between big priest and, and stuff like big rogue and big shaman is that the offender right in illuminate is also a standard card if it was a wild specific card i feel like you might have seen somebody stand in because out of the three right i think big priest has the popularity right it has the play rate and it has the play pattern concern it just doesn't have the, the power right because it's not very consistent at doing the broken thing but I do think if Illuminate was a wild specific card, we might have seen something happen to it. Um, and I, I think maybe I'm, I'm speculating here, but like because Illusionist is a wild specific card and because Bloom was a wild specific card, we got changes a lot faster to those because it was a lot easier to address them without having to, you know, finesse a change that didn't affect standard. And maybe I'm reading into this a little bit too much, but um, like I, I also agree. Like I don't, I'm not defending Big Priest. Big Priest is gross when it does the thing, it doesn't always do the thing though. But I understand that, like, I I understand that when when it happens, it's really gross and it makes you want to close Hearthstone for the day. Like, I understand that. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if sometime in the future we saw maybe something happen. But I, I think it's very understandable as to why something didn't happen in this like very quick patch that we had. I, yeah, um, I I agree with that. I think that like Big Priest strength isn't even just like its ability to high roll with the illuminate because again that's not happening nearly as consistently as a big rogue or a big shaman so like i don't know that deleting illuminate outright would necessarily solve the problems that people have uh with big breeze because you can still like palm reading and do an early essence you would maybe make the deck slower like you wouldn't have the the redundancy in the idol so it would certainly remove its strength like it some of its uh win rate but not like the core issue that people have um with the deck which is just i don't know the the ability to layer threats so like that's you know that tends to be the problem that people have with it in in my observation and you know that like it, it it's not stealing the games it's like dragging on the games until like you're just completely exhausted of removal as your control deck and then you like finally can't clear a nuptial and so you die like i i don't know that like even there isn't i guess what i'm trying to get at is there isn't necessarily an elegant solution in a singular card to the big priest problem like there was for lightning bloom and big shaman like there was for illusionist in um in in big rogue like yeah, deleting Illuminate will be a big setback for it, but like, again, as we've discussed, the Illuminate isn't terribly reliable in hitting the um, uh, the the Shadow Essence so that you get it on your high roll in turn two or three. Like, it's still a very good card in the deck because like hitting a Palm Rating, hitting an Essence is still strong. So it's a strong card, but it's not like it's not enabling things in the same way that those two cards were. I think another problem is. Actually, to a point that Meowth made, like um, the fact that it has a popularity despite not having the same win rate as um, a, as a big rogue might actually be a detriment to it, it ever getting nerfed because, like, 
it has that nostalgia attached to it. It is a you know prominent wild deck, no matter how successful it is. So that that may give them reservations for uh, for changing it down the line. Um, and then I, I guess the last thing I'll say about this is I think that a lot of people are still going to the the speed that they address Big Rogue is a good thing, but I think there are going to be people maybe especially down the ladder that are a little bit sore about this change and feel that it's unjustified because they never really had to experience it because it did get adjusted so quickly. We never got like proper stats for this. Um, and, you know, we didn't actually see it make its way necessarily all the way down the ladder. So people are going to maybe have some uh, questions about this and because they didn't experience it themselves or weren't playing during that time and might be a little bit bitter about the fact, but I don't know my experience but the deck absolutely needed the change. Yeah, I I don't I don't think any of the Intune players w- would have that concern, like you mentioned. But I also I don't know, like I think it's okay that big priests exist. And I know I might get a little bit of flack for this, like because it's not I don't know. It, people like the deck, like people love playing big priests as much as there are people that hate playing against big priests. But there are a lot of people that actually genuinely enjoy playing the deck. And so if you hit, like, all three big decks, is that something that you really want to do and kind of lock people out of playing like an archetype or a style of deck that they enjoy, even if it is maybe not the most fun thing to play against? I mean, Well, I mean, I wouldn't be opposed. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. I, I would be opposed to Big Priest change, but uh, then again, you know, I'm someone that wants more active changes. So yeah. uh, I, I think the Big Rogue was definitely the more egregious defender just because of the speed. Um, and I, I think Ruffle, like the, it's a great point. I think talking about the the outcry and because the um, the trickle down effect of the deck, uh, like the deck has only been around like for a very short amount of time, and um, pretty much like always the biggest indicator of complaints is popularity. Like people will always complain about what they see the most, and a big price has been around for a long time as well. So there's sort of this yeah, build up of fatigue. Um, the you know it, not even just fatigue recently with like this most recent iteration of the deck. But like there's like four years of inbuilt hatred and like I despise Barnes and you know Barnes is gone but the the feeling lingers and um, you know I, I think Big Priest is definitely not one of the most fun decks. Also, uh, they beat different things. I think I think Big Rogue is particularly oppressive against board based stuff and Big uh, sorry Big Rogue is particularly oppressive against that and Big Priest might be more punishing towards um, the more uh, late gamey fatigue type decks where the Neptulon could do a lot more and like Silence and you know stealing the card and things like that might be uh, a bit more effective against rogue instead so um yeah i'm obviously very happy to see this change and a little unexpected yeah all right we talked a lot about cobalt illusionist uh let's talk about another couple of changes that are really going to impact wild uh because they're popular in or they're very important for some popular decks uh so let's let's start with my baby let's start with uh free shaman uh free shaman snowfall guardian is going from base 3-3 three, three to base 5-5. Five, five. <laughs> yeah, don't pretend I can't see you. Come on. Um, <laughs> but it no longer grows based on minions frozen. Um, this is a huge nerf. Huge, huge nerf. Um, so you can technically still chain Snowfall Guardians, right? With Macaws and Grumbles. Um, but the fact that it no longer grows makes it a lot easier to kill, which makes it a lot harder to chain with stuff like Grumble and Zola. Also importantly, it also means your Shuttle Walk no longer becomes... An immediate win con, right? You have to commit card slots in your deck to other stuff like Denathrius or even like Life Drink, other crap that kills the opponent because it's no longer gaining the stats. Huge, huge nerf to the deck. It is one of the best decks in the format, I think, in my opinion. But like, it'll still be a playable deck. Snowfall Guardian probably still a playable card in that deck, but it no longer is like the win condition that it used to be uh, in Free Shaman. So very, very significant change here. Um, I know you two love it. I know you two are so excited for this change, but uh, you know, let, let's get some some analysis for the uh, the, the listeners out there. <laughs> yeah, the the reason that I love this change is because it's a sane change to a card. A singular card should not be simultaneously like able to win you the game and stop the opponent from winning the game, right? Like it the the lethality that uh, Snowfall Guardian presented was problematic in a card that's inherently meant to be defensive so like the fact that you can lock your opponent out on the board and then bash him in the face for a lot of damage that's too much for one card to do i don't care how much mana it it costs you know like so just choose one of those things and i think that like like i said it was meant to be a defensive card let it be that and that's what the new iteration of it is it's still it's still a frost nova or a 
two-sided Frost Nova. It's still, like you said, Free Shaman probably still going to be a deck. You just need to actually find a separate card to act as your win condition. And I think most importantly what this does is it gets rid of, like, really nonsense, like, Bolner interactions with uh, Snowfall Guardian. It doesn't, you know, allow you to just, like, play three cards in Snowfall Macaw Macaw or some combination of Snowfall Macaw and Bolner or even throw a Grumble in there if you want. Like, that's a very small subset of your deck that you can just draw and win the game. So I think that that's a really unhealthy way for the deck to play, especially against, like, board-based decks, because, you know, if you get frozen for, for three turns in a row, sure. Like, you can still, you know, make that push for damage later, but, like, if you're then getting on the backswing, a tw you know, 22 damage to your face, like... You, you run out of the time, and again, a singular card should not be allowed to do that. And so I think just having it uh, freeze the board is probably a healthier state for it. And I, yeah, it's going to knock Free Shaman down a bit, but I think that maybe that's not a bad thing. Like, uh, you know, I, I think that it was a bit of a strong deck, and it's like, it's a very dangerous deck to be allowed to be that strong. Like, people don't like that low level of interactivity uh in their opponents easy. in the same way easy I, ruffle I, <laughs> I, I i i was trying to find a better word but i couldn't um but like it's the same reason people still have negative feelings about freeze mage it's why people aren't a big fan of the current like iteration of uh the skeleton mage and in, in standard so like you know people don't like having stuff on the board that isn't able to attack their opponent in the face like that's really frustrating to turn after turn not be able to attack with your minions so i don't think that a free shaman needs to be as powerful as it has been historically and the deck can find win conditions still like denathrius is still going to be good the deck's still going to be good um you know maybe it shifts to a, a reno version and it can do some other silly things but like the deck's still good it, it's just not going to be as good oh, i'm so excited ah it feels great um i don't know there's so many so many good things about this change uh what i what i love in particular is that you can actually kill the thing so you don't have to worry about grumble nearly as much like oh uni 3 3 macaws like oh kill it so easy now uh compared to before so that's huge because grumble was always this like ever present threat right whenever they started doing the snowfall thing and it's like it made it often that you have to like dedicate so many resources to try and kill off the freezy boy first um so that's great um yeah i think everything ruffle said spot on in terms of the uh taking away the threat making it a uh, more of a purely defensive card is great um you know people are keck wing laughing at it saying it's a worse varden uh which it is but it's in a class that's better suited to abuse varden because you have the macaws and the shadow walk and the yada 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 so um i don't know it's great like the uh certain matchups are gonna change very brutally for the shaman um something like even warlock for example man even warlock probably just like farms this deck now now that it doesn't have to worry about like a 12 damage swing on the on the back end like it can just remove it or just ignore it that's great um but there are also going to be situations where it, it doesn't make too much of a difference like i think we've all played a lot of games against shaman where you know it doesn't actually matter what stats were on the uh snowfall guardian because you ended up getting looped anyway so um the point is the change is significant um the deck will drop off like you only need to be losing like one an extra 20 games than you were before to like drop like one of those wins flips to a loss and all of a sudden your deck loses five percent win rate kind of thing um like uh you know it doesn't take that much um and so i don't know it feels very very positive uh and i think the shaman will probably still be okay um but i think it'll probably be very difficult for it to be uh, top tier at this point, obviously. Yeah. So, a lot of the disruption tools it has will still be effective in wild. But um, yeah, I don't know. Super happy about this one. I, I mean, I agree with everything. I know the card was busted, right? I know the deck is not fun to play against. Like, I know that this change was coming and it's a good change. And I agree with everything you guys have said. Um, but I like, I think the, the change is like super significant. I think it knocks it down from like, I think currently one of the top four or five decks in the format. And like, I don't know if it would make my top 10, top 15 post patch because i feel like the snowfall garden is a huge change um and, and it's like effectively like kind of kills the current versions of the deck right um and so it might make a comeback different win con maybe maybe a reno shaman shell is like the best way to build it it's going to become 
I, I don't know if this is going to become more or less tilting, but it's going to become even more reliant, I feel like, on Flurgal Talks. Um, and so when they have that kind of early game swing, it's going to be even more tilting, I feel like, to play against because it's not like, oh, they have Flurgal Talks or they have the Snowfall. It's, oh, they need the Flurgal Talks and they have the Flurgal Talks and that kind of sucks. But uh, yeah, I, I don't think I can yeah, get extra tilted from Flurgal Talks no, anymore. Not I think really. I'm at max mm. level of tilt. I, I right. still feel like Flurgal like, Talks is probably the more polarizing thing to me. Um, because, like, Snowfall Guardian, at least, it was, like, coming down on turn six, right? Turn seven. And as, like, Aggro deck, you still had the opportunity to kill him before then. And then they had Flurgal Talks, and he just, like, had no shot. Um, but that being but, said, I mean, I, <laughs> I don't feel like that changes anything. Like, now, <laughs> if they have Flurgal Talks, you're mad. Afterwards, you mad they have too, Flurgal right? Talks. But, yeah. Afterwards, they have Flurgal Talks, you're still mad. Like, Flurgal Talks still does the same thing, so you're still just equally mad. You just now have a chance when they don't have Flurgal Talks and they have the Snowfall. Like, the, this is be- what? No, I'm, this I'm is better. I'm agreeing with you. I'm agreeing with you. I'm saying, to me, I would have rather seen the Flurgal Talks address than the Snowfall. Um, I would have had If I had to choose one. Yeah, and we both. If I had to choose oh, no. one. Just both. Okay. Just both. Whatever. Just both. All right. Well, they didn't hit both. They only hit the Snowfall I've... Guardian. Free Shaman, going to be significantly worse. I will say, I've seen some cope from some Shaman players. Like, I've seen a whole lot of the stats don't matter. It's all about the effect. Like, it just the infinite freeze is the only thing. And I'm like, oh, buddy, I think it's going to be a rough time. What's the bad chance for you? Like, I, I don't understand people that say that, right? Because, like, first of all, that's how you killed people. Like, that's how you ended games was, was with the stats. <laughs> and then, like, now you're even more susceptible, right? Like, before, if they hit your Shutter Walk with a Rad or a Theotar, like, you still had the ability to win games with Snowfall Guardian. Now, if they rat or shutter or theotar your shutter walk, you're screwed. You don't have a way to win the game, and so unless like you have this Denathrius that's juiced that somehow doesn't get hit by the rat or the mutanus or the theotar, and then then maybe you're winning the game that way. But now you're so much more susceptible to disruption and everything. Like I, I think the deck is just so much worse. No, it is. Yeah, no, yeah. The, the, which is probably the, the, thing, right. the stats matter because again, like like I was talking about, you you can't just win off the back of drawing like of a hand you know a small number of cards and then that becomes an automatic win right like you like you mentioned like shutter walk is necessary now whereas in a lot of games it was just eh, if i draw it it's nice but like i've still got these big snowballs that i can uh that i can loop and eh, i'll just do like a i'll just do a you know mini shutter walk with the bird that i have paired with this uh, stupid elemental so like yeah, you can't do that anymore. That that decreases a lot of games that the deck won. And um, like Corb said, you don't need that many games out of 20 to like have a dramatic shift in a deck's win rate. Yeah. All right. So for the five of you guys out there that are free shaman apologists with me, don't worry. I understand. I understand that our deck sucks now. It's okay. We'll find something else. To the rest of you guys, you guys can rejoice with Raffle and Corb. The Shutterwalk Shaman is indeed. I guess I should say specifically free shaman is indeed dead. Shadow Walk Shaman might make a comeback. We'll see. Um, all right. The third big nerf for Wild. Uh, big. Uh, Celestial Limit. Uh, no longer affects the opponent. Uh, I saw a lot of people saying hallelujah uh, for this card, and I think this is a great change for standard Celestial Limit Druid. I don't know that it really changes the needle too much on Wild Celestial Limit Druid. That being said, I don't play the deck myself a ton, so I'm not the most well-informed, so I kind of defer to to you guys for this but i feel like normally when i play against a celestial alignment druid they're kind of doing gloop seeds otters scales thing playing the alignment in the same turn and still killing you anyways and so it doesn't really feel like it it matters that it doesn't affect you anymore um i I know there might be some fringe case scenarios against stuff like quest mage that it kind of like worsens your your win rate but overall i feel like this is not doing a whole lot i think uh I think this is going to be one that's tough to evaluate. Like, um, like, like you said, a lot of time, or like you said, it's possible whether it's Pride Seeker or the Floops into Scales for like the Alignment Druid to um, pop off on the the turn that it plays it. But I, I feel like it's the the same Illuminate discussion that we we're just having. Like, you remember it when it happens, but like it doesn't happen enough. And very similar to the you know the win rate discussion that we we're just talking about, you don't need to flip that many games in order to drop a, a deck's win rate, which pushes people off of a deck pretty often. 
So I could very well see this being pretty similar to like that first, maybe not a good example because of where the deck is right now, but that first iteration of the uh, the quest nerf or the quest mage nerf where people were like, this does nothing, this does nothing, it's only two extra spells. Uh, but then the, the deck fell off completely. I don't think that it'll fall off completely because you still have the potential to, to bop off, but I think it might start pushing people off of like alignment versions of the deck and just doing like uh broken guff things like i don't know that like Druid needs alignment to be successful in in wild right now um so like i don't know like i i'm with you in that i don't think it's like the change i would have necessarily gone for i don't even know what the change i would have gone for is like i don't know how you solve the problem with uh alignment because Personally, in Wild, I think the problem is the the Floop's Gloop and the the Twig's Fear interaction. So, like, I don't know that I really care that much about <laughs> about changing alignment. I think maybe this is a healthy change for those situations where, like, you have lethal presented, they alignment you, and then you aren't able to like play multiple cards to uh, to to close out the game, which you know, small subset of games. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I would have been happier with just like a, a twig sphere or um or floops gloop change to make it so that like druid in general isn't able to have like thirty plus mana turns on a regular basis. Like I don't know, alignment isn't the primary concern for me, even though it's really unfun to play against. Um this takes away some of the unfun play patterns, I guess, but like I don't know. Yeah, when I when I saw this change, I was actually very bummed out initially, uh, because I wanted the card. Because like you know, like in an ideal world, we would get the twig sphere and all that kind of things addressed, but um, that obviously wasn't happening. So, uh, you know, I, I wanted alignment to be nuked. Um, and you know, I again, I don't know what the nerf would have been. Maybe we could have put alignment at twenty one mana, and that would have been fine. Like uh, I wouldn't have been opposed to that, but. Then after kind of thinking about it, I think this change is solid. I think it's going to have a bigger impact than what people might initially think uh, when they first read it. Um, because, uh, you know, the, the counter argument is that the Druid will... Like, the Druid can just OTK on the turn they play the alignment anyway. And it's like, yeah, but now they need to. Okay, like, now they need to kill you. And there's a the big difference between can and need. Um, like, I think that makes a significant difference. The Togwaggle version of the deck is gone, I think, because you, like, it, it, the opponent just has enough mana to do the swap. Uh, it means that the Azelina that they steal, like, if they steal the cheat thing back, the all your cards will cost max mana. So, like, that's bad. Um, so they don't get to, like, flood out threats and stuff with the Azelina on the same turn. They do that. Um, and or, having both Tog and Azelina in the same deck means that it's much, much, much more open to disruption before. Uh, you can't just win off the Tog Waggle exclusively. So that's huge. Uh, because a lot of time you used to just play Tog and you didn't even need Nazalina. Um, so that's dead. Uh, Mechathun, though. How much does this change affect, like, the Mechathun thing? Um, I think it's a pretty big deal. Uh, just in general. Um, it, it, it's a lot more pressure uh, on, the, on the opponent just because they... Um, they they lose now to things like quest mage i think they lose to pillager rogue uh previously the alignment interaction was actually a huge deal there where you could uh just stop the quest mage from being able to ever play the reward and now that matchup is probably favored i think for the mage or uh, it's definitely very different than where it was um and yeah it, it just means that like like rob was talking about there, there are enough games enough situations where like yeah you you might not um always just play the alignment on turn eight but it happens like you can just play alignment on turn eight and the next turn pop the twig and all of a sudden you just gg and now you can't really do that a lot of the time so i i, I think it's a big change and hopefully uh just a small percentage in win rate going down is enough to kind of push people off the deck i think people are going to gear more towards other forms of druid i think druid will be fine it just won't be alignment druid and wild and i think in terms of combo stuff uh pillager and quest mage are becoming more and more the predominant uh, solitaire archetypes that people are going to be playing. I really hope you guys are right because alignment is you guys. You guys hated playing against Snowfall Guardian. Alignment is one of those decks that I absolutely despise playing against, and so I'm hoping that your optimism pays off and that you know people kind of gravitate away from the deck as it drops in win rate. Um, I just I, I am very biased. I, I remember all of the times that I get hit by Gloop into Seeds into Flipper into Alignment into lose the game on the same turn and. 
hoping hoping that that's not consistent enough people probably are going to be gravitating back towards like mana saber as well to just kind of help alleviate the the or the maybe alleviate the, the yeah the chances like that increase you pop off. the ability yeah to pop off on the same time yeah exactly um which hopefully means that it's losing percentage points against stuff like pirate rogue or beast hunter uh, and things like that mm-hmm. so i'm hope i'm hopeful that you guys are right um and, and that i'm overreacting a little bit but my gut instinct was like this doesn't do doesn't do anything to stop the, the pop-off turns that happened to me today on stream like it, it doesn't stop anything like well, this nerf doesn't do anything but we'll see that being said i think you're completely 100 percent correct like druid still has an embarrassment of riches in the format like dragon druid renathalt and athreus druid whatever style of slow druid archetype that you want to play still has gloop and all these things it still has twigs for guff like it's still going to be doing the the gross dumb things that the druid tends to do even without alignment you're going to be seeing a lot more sides and Atheris and Druid now. Like, that is going to be something that's happening regularly. Yeah, the the Renathal version with uh, with Floop and Bran and Widow, Widow Bloom Seed and, uh, and Dirty Rats, like, that deck has been... It looks good. Like, it performs well, super clean. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if, like, that became the, like, Druid deck of choice. Like, no, I don't think it's running dragons outside of, like, Anixia. Um or the seven drop maybe the the yeah the seven drop yeah. yeah so all right druid should still be fine hopefully alignment is dead uh you know if snowfall guardian has to die hopefully alignment has to die as well uh there are two okay. other changes here um we did get a change to the wild seeds but not actually wild spirits or Aralon. um i was really scared that they were gonna nerf wild spirits but instead uh we got a nerf to one specific minion uh the five four stag that gives you a weapon uh after it's dormant for three turns now gives you a 3-2 instead of a 4-2. Uh, I mean, that is 2 damage nerf on every time that you summon that 5-4. Um, but Wild Spirits is still kind of busted. Aralon still seems kind of busted. So it does seem like um, all of the Hunter decks that are running this Wild Seed package should be fine. Like, it's going to obviously be a little bit worse, but they still seem like very, very solid cards. Yeah, I think this is intentionally a light touch because, um, I don't know, like how Hunter's doing very well right now. Um, but um, I don't know how, like, the biggest defender always seemed to be the stag for me just because, like, eight damage for that weapon is absurd. And I was just, anytime I'd play a, a card that summoned a wild seed, I was just perpetually praying for the stag and getting as many stags as possible. And, like, it, it, yeah um so i think this is the one to target um i think it does probably again do a little bit more than you would think intuitively because like six is a lot less than eight when it comes to uh making the opponent die especially for the kind of decks that um we're running these so yeah uh probably still strong decks and i think an intentionally light touch for it so yeah, I like that they went very light on this rather than like Wild Spirits to four or something like that. I think this package in general has been very successful. I think it's very fun. Uh, um, you know, the splashable... Like, I don't know, sometimes people have problems with like splashable packages that can kind of go in any deck. And uh, it could definitely get old over time. But I think so far, I, I've really enjoyed having the Wild Spirits, especially in Wild uh, in general. I think it's been good to have something that's very new. I like a, a new package of cards that has kind of boosted the arc side, uh, the class a lot. So I, I really like that they went lightly here. To be fair, I'd still be okay with a Wild Spirits to four. I think that, that would still be a fine card. Uh, but yeah, we'll see how this shakes out before I start uh, uh, clamoring for that one. Yeah. All right, we do have one last nerf to talk about, um, and that is Vile Library. This is the card that. We kind of slept on, I think, coming in. We talked about this last week. We, we were really high on a pending catastrophe. It turns out Vile Library was the uh, the imp, you know, mm-hmm. uh, the card that was really abused They're by both Import good. Luck. Yeah. Well, the Vile Library was the one that I was like, eh, it, it's all right. And then it ended up being two mana plus six plus six, which is kind of cracked. So, but it is now losing that base plus one plus one. Very happy they went for this change instead of bumping it up a mana because that yeah. would be really detrimental to the card. Uh, with it still being at two mana, card still very good. Um, like the the curve of one drop into library into Fiend of Circle is still absolutely insane. Um, I'm I'm sure it'll have a detrimental effect, especially in like the mirror uh, or like aggressive mirrors, uh, where like just the extra plus one plus one makes a huge difference when making value trades and things like that. But I think in general, Imp Warlock, at least in Wild, uh, 
should still be playing Vile Library. It's probably still very happy to be playing Vile Library and should still be like a pretty good deck. Yeah, the deck also has the benefit of uh, a decrease in popularity for Snowfall Guardian and uh, Big Rogue getting deleted entirely. So, like, you can actually play for the early boards now. Thanks, in is that that second one is a real big deal. Like, being able to play for early boards like makes the deck uh, playable again. Um, I don't think that we got a good assessment of just how good it could be because, um, you know, as it, it was somebody a deck that people played early. Um, and then kind of moved off of, uh, especially when Big Rogue rose in prominence, because, like, why would you play this deck that doesn't, when your most popular matchup doesn't allow you to play the game? Um, so, yeah, we'll see. I, I, I think it's a, I think it's a pretty big hit. I think it's, you know, uh, probably a bigger hit than the, the Wild Seeds, and uh, that's maybe an underestimated hit in terms of uh, how heavy it is. Um, Obviously, it's not getting like outright deleted, like a uh, Cobalt Illusionist or anything like that. But like, I, I think it's a pretty big hit. This is a big portion of why the deck was doing well was early file libraries, and now, like, the big thing that you can't just do is like play it for a plus one plus one for tempo when you like need to grip the uh, the board early. You actually have to have Imps on board now, and that you know, in some cases, that does make a difference. Yeah, the uh, the change is like is is definitely like harsher, I think, than the Wild Spirits one. But I also think that this card is performing better than any of the Hunter cards. Like at the same time, the Hunter nerf kind of affects like four cards at once, so it's kind of like a you know <laughs> makes sense. Um, but yeah, I, like they're definitely di diminishing returns, right? Like buffing a minion plus five plus five versus plus six plus six, it, it doesn't make a difference in like that many situations. But buffing a minion plus one plus one versus plus two plus two man that that matters a lot and so this deck like it, it becomes so much worse than the kind of aggressive matchups ruffles talking about and there's like situations where you're not just using it as massive burst missile um when you're trying to use it more as a delicate tool to like get a clean value trade and that that hurts uh quite a bit i think the card will still be very strong um but before it was probably the biggest outlier performance wise in the entire format for, for any deck like it's drawn winner it was just above everything else and more than anything else i saw on like the hey just replay drawn winner at stats so um good card probably still but nerf is still very very important so hopefully the deck doesn't die in wild or anything hopefully it's still around hopefully it'll still be around um all right so those are the five nerfs that are coming on tuesday um so let us know down in the comments your <laughs> your thoughts your feels your opinions on all of these changes i know a lot of people are super excited for that Big Rogue and Snowfall great, uh, Guardian nerfs, and so yeah, just let us know. You know how you guys are feeling about it. Uh, buffs wise, uh, we know two of the buffs, but I feel like it's not really worth talking about a lot of these until we actually see the full list of buffs, and maybe we'll just talk about it mm -hmm. next week uh, once we've actually had the opportunity to play with these uh, as well. And so uh, all of these should be coming out in, in patch notes on Monday. So these are coming out after we've recorded. So we're not like intentionally not talking about things. We just well, don't know what they are. I will say that the. Uh giving magnifying glass an extra attack it's uh it's gonna gonna do wonders for our top five strongest predictions because uh the fact that <laughs> who knew that magnifying glass was gonna be the uh uh sorry magnify glaive was gonna be the deck of chaos of the set hey it's it's still a very strong card the deck just blows okay the card itself is like carrying the archetype if they have to buff the card me out i don't think it well, belonged in the top five for starters all right you know yeah. what you're not wrong okay you're not wrong but I have lost to many an aggro demon hunter, and Magnifying Glaive was the reason that I lost, okay? And so, just, maybe it, it's going to become, like, one of those, if you draw it, it's going to be absolutely, like, insane sort of cards. Maybe, like, yeah. yeah. But yeah. We'll, we'll talk about all of these next week. Um, to wrap up the episode, we did promise to talk to the, uh, talk about some, some more decks this week. I know last week we talked about, like, ten of them. Um, and I know Corb wanted to talk specifically about a couple of couple of decks are just like an archetype of deck so Corbin's gonna like let you take it away here and uh lead us off oh sure uh the the decks that kind of I want to talk about that we didn't touch on too much last last week I think um I just like Renathal and just like Reno control decks in general um something that we're seeing a lot in standard uh, like Renathal is making huge impact like uh, it's absolutely massive in standard about like half the decks at legend uh renathal decks right now uh so whether we're talking about like skeleton mage uh control shaman big beast hunter ramp druid 
Uh, you can just go through the list and there's like a lot of decks that just need that health buffer and uh, making huge use out of some of the new cards that have come out. And I think that um, it's kind of a little bit slept on right now, but I think that like there's a lot of very, very viable like Renathal decks in general that are starting to use this neutral package that has come out. Um, I think like Reno Paladin, I think that Renathal Shamans, uh, there's kind of like a lot of, I, like even something like Reno Renathal Hunter um, is something that you probably had never placed on ladder. But I built it, and I looked at it, and I'm like, I think this is probably, like, pretty competitive. I think that, like, this package of cards that we've gotten in the neutral pool with things like Theatar, um, Psy Denathrius, um, uh, even, like, Kale, uh, Bran has kind of, like, gotten a lot better. This is all kind of stuff that we're seeing right now in Standard, and I think there's, there's huge potential for it to cross over into Wild. Um, I know, like, Reno Shadow Priest is kind of, like, the big one that's getting a lot of hype right now, and a lot of people have, you know... Uh, I know there's a lot of hype in it, particularly coming out of the Chinese communities, um, where it's been labeled as like tier tier one and things like that. And uh, I think part of that is just because it has a feeling where it can theoretically beat any matchup because you can disrupt combo pretty well and you can also beat aggro. Um, but I think that like the Reno Renathal Shadow Priest is kind of like sort of just uh, overshadowing, not to make too much of a pun there but overshadowing like everything else that the other classes can do i think that renathal in general is making these decks super viable and i think like especially after the alignment nerf we're probably going to see a lot more of it in druid um and and things like that so i just think in general these the this type of art like this package this whole like control is dead idea in, in wild i think uh people are going to be in for a bit of an awakening um it should definitely be exploring kind of this type of archetype and stuff in general uh, as we move forward to this expansion no i i would i would second that um i think that theotar in particular kind of gives those decks um another tool for um the mechathune warlocks the uh quest mages those types of uh of decks um i had the joy of uh stealing uh you know, in an otherwise unwinnable situation, I stole a quest rogue's uh, quest reward because, you know, I just had Theotar on curve. And so, like, those types of situations uh, give that type of deck, um, you know, some uh, semblance of, of a chance in, in those type of matchups where otherwise they would be heavily reliant on Dirty Rat Plus, right? Because Megathune, you can't just Dirty Rat it. To, or, you know, Big Minion, you can't just uh, Dirty Rat it and you have to be able to kill it. Or... Or Mutanus like hitting the right card. You you have a little bit more agency in what Theotar hits. So I think that not only does it give you redundancy, but it gives you a little bit more um, you know agency over um, the the disruption that you do cause. So um, you know I don't I'm not yet to say that or not yet here to say that like Theotar is healthy and the savior for wild, but like I don't know um, I'm into it. I had some good success with that Reno Shadow Priest. I actually great success with um lpg mage uh, i i know that's a, a bit of a meme but like just having that um that extra card especially if you're going up to um 40 cards like having that redundancy is pretty critical um in order to cause the disruption while still having that chance against aggro so yeah i'm i'm excited to to try out um some of those other things in particular like a uh, arena paladin um with some of those new cards because like Reno Paladin was there uh, before it kind of like stopped getting played um, for a variety of reasons, but like still probably, um, you know, has same good matchups. If it can now disrupt uh, those combo decks that were probably pushing it out of the way. Um, and like, I even saw on the Chinese server that a Reno lock uh, running mm -hmm. pretty much exactly what you said. Um, is uh we just hit rank one legend and that's like a big server with a you know a, a, a lot of people playing on it and it was basically just kind of that pile of <laughs> of, of 40 uh 40 cards but like i don't know it, it just seems like it found an answer is running things like uh battleground battle master like um you know even even a kalethos so that you could cheat things out a little bit but like you, you know that neutral package pairs well with a lot of things. So you can just run like the broken interaction that you have in a certain class, whether it's Florgal Tox or, um, you know, Stinger, Jigafin, 
and then all of those extra disruption tools or whatever they might be to um to just find a way to win and you know denathrius tends to be a pretty good way to win games of hearthstone it seems too like i think we might have uh slept a little bit on just how splashable that card is um in uh in that type of deck because like healing good in uh and you're gonna be able to heal a lot if you have 40 health and uh, you're facing down aggro yeah i just first on the denathrius point since that was brought up last i've been splashing denathrius in a ton of decks and it's been like really good like just even in something like even lock where you like wouldn't think of a ton of things dying like you have a bunch of two drops you have the imps from tamsin right you, you have the mules a lot of things kind of die uh and it's just like a really solid card in even lock um it's also just been really good in shaman and i think it's like even better in shaman now that snowfall guardians nerfed um so first of all yeah denathri is super swashable um you should be playing it a lot more decks um but like specifically with renathal i know our kind of hesitation when we saw renathal was just like we're in wild synergy is super important do do 40 card decks have the not only the card quality but do they have like the ability to make up for the lack of consistency now that you have with a 40 card shell um and i guess what we're seeing like just based off of this conversation is maybe that drop off isn't as drastic as we thought it was between 40 and 30 but also there there are a lot of decks out there that do have the card quality and the ability to make up that consistency so like even like something like 40 card shaman right a a class that has historically lacked card draw i felt like it's just been very good um and i know i know it's seeing playing other classes as well but it's kind of surprising to me i'm not gonna lie like i i was very skeptical i was like okay renathal will be good in druid druid has a ton of card draw it's got really high quality is it gonna like is it good enough elsewhere like i I don't didn't know if the card quality was gonna be there when you had to add nine cards to your deck and it turns out kind of when you have access to the entire history of wild you know the drop off like there's still a lot of quality cards that don't see play turns out the drop off wasn't as drastic as i thought it might be yeah, also taking a big L on the uh, on the Renathal issue. I remember, you know, being very down on it, and just thinking that it was probably just going to be a warlock thing and something that people, you know, tried because they liked the idea, but wasn't really optimal. And nah, I think the uh, like I said, huge L on that. At the ten health, turns out it matters a lot because that you know an extra twenty five percent boost on your life total matters. Um, it's kind of interesting. I've seen like Pyro win rate is kind of like low-key kind of uh dropping off a little bit uh from where it was like it's still very good but um i'm kind of wondering about like just aggro in general in the in the format um and kind of like where we're headed if the format becomes very uh renathol heavy it's kind of interesting it reminds me a little bit of um of barons um that might be a little bit of a strange comparison but i remember barons being a uh just like very control heavy kind of like greed pile um and this is probably going to become a little bit similar i think i or at least um you know like more than it has been in wild in the past where i, I can see a ton of these renathal decks becoming very prominent um and you know like maybe the renathal is even more important now in uh in shaman than it was previously you know like with with the snowfall nerf and um you know another card another neutral card that might become like a thing like uh, we're seeing a ton of standard uh insatiable devourer you know, Insatiable Devourer, another big, fat, neutral, nine drop that just, like, eats other big, fat minions. Like, that can probably be very effective in something like Shadow Walk Shaman as well, and or, I don't know, like, a whole bunch of classes. It's- I don't know. We're saying weird stuff. Like, even in Standard Imp Lock, Standard Imp Lock is playing side and Athreus, man. Like, there's weird stuff going on in that format, and I think a lot of it is going to translate over into Wild. I, yeah, I think before we see Insatiable Devourer, we'll probably start seeing... Uh, more Kilthos, and that might be another L for us in terms of um, <laughs> evaluating that card. But like, we did to be clear with that one, we did say it wasn't going to be nearly as broken as the original. But um, there's just a lot of like uh, Bran, uh, Kilthos, Denathrius just popping up in decks because that's a huge swing and uh, gains you a lot of health, deals a lot of damage. Um, you know, we'll see if it's uh, good enough. Um, for, you know, if things trend towards a slow greed fest, yes, that, that's good into slow greed. But like when things trend towards a slow greed fest, Big Priest is coming back uh, and rising <laughs> in popularity and prominence. And the, some of those combo decks are going to, you know, they're not going to get disrupted every time. They're still going to like have a decent matchup into those slow greed fests. So, um, 
you know, you don't really want to be holding on to Bran, Kael'thas, uh, Denathrius in, in those types of matchups. So, um, yeah, I'd be curious to see how things trend. I think that, like, a lot of times, wild players tend to just, like, borrow from standard and uh I, I think i would i would expect to see a lot more kale thoughts in the in the near future yeah, yeah it's like... very speculative this is very like speculating because like we don't even know what the buffs are right like I, i'm throwing this kind of like way out of the future but uh yeah anyway sorry me out okay. no sorry i i think we we can't take our l on kale thoughts just yet because it's only seeing play with denathrius right like it's not like a standalone busted card True. um but the synergy with Bran and Kael'thas and Denathrius is, is kind of gross. Um, I, I still hesitate to see like a nine mana three card combo being a thing that like breaks the format, which is what people were like predicting for Kael'thas as well. So like, you know, maybe we were we underestimated it, but that still doesn't yeah. mean that other people vastly overestimated it. Yeah, I also think that it's. I, I don't. I'm, I'm not sold on like the brand Kael'thas Denathrius if we're trending towards this neutral package of Theotar in every deck, right? Because then it's like, oh, you just you want their Kael'thas, you want their Denathrius, and then they're kind of useless. Uh, maybe. Yeah, but maybe you can not. brand. You can brand your own Theotar too. So like, brand is a relevant. Steal it right back, Meath. Hey, dude, right back. <laughs> I I love brand. You don't have to convince me about that. But uh, I don't know. It's it's super interesting. I think the meta. The meta's kind of weird. Right, the meta is nowhere close to like solved or settled or anything like that, and we're getting buffs and nerfs to kind of shake out everything up again. Um, I'm a little, I'm a little hesitant. You, you said pirate rogues kind of the winner. It's kind of dipping. I wonder how much of that is due to big rogue, and it's just yeah. like I feel like it's really good against pirate rogue because like personally, pirate rogue still seems kind of busted in half. Um, but we'll, we'll see. The meta, the meta, like I said, the meta is weird. Um, it'll be really interesting. Uh, I guess. One last deck that I want to tack on to this this conversation here. Um, I want to talk about Raffle's favorite deck uh, a little bit here at the end. Uh, let's talk about some Darkest Hour. Um, <laughs> because I know Core played a little bit of his version of the deck. And he said, supposedly he did well with it, but he just like never tweeted it because he didn't want it to go public. I have no <laughs> shame. Uh, I built my own version of the deck. I, I did pretty well with it. Um, that 3-mana three 3-3, three, three, really good for discounting your Darkest Hours. And uh, I know we're talking about Shadowborn General and Big Rogue. It's also really freaking busted in, in Darkest Hour Warlock. Um, yeah, the, the deck actually seems real. The deck the deck is, I don't want to say good. It's not Big Rogue, Big Priest. Or I guess I shouldn't say it's not Big Shaman, Big Rogue levels of good. But it might be Big Priest levels of good. And uh, I don't know, that that's enough. People love that deck. I'm, I'm sorry in advance, Ruffle. And that wraps up today's I'm re- episode. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm, re- I'm retiring from the state of wild. I'd like to announce that officially. All right. So uh, also there will be an application down in the comments for our, our third house. So if you guys are interested, just just let us know. <laughs> um, but yeah, just just keep an eye out. Like the whole point of me bringing that up is there's still a lot of shit in wild that's not solved. Right. Play some stuff. There's a lot of sweet stuff out there. Um, gosh, it's going to be weird if Renathal ends up being like the thing. Right. The new Bach again of like every deck and. And then inevitably we'll, we'll say the thing is like every deck is going to trend towards a Renathal version of the deck, right? Just like we thought with Baku and Gen. And then somehow some way it'll get power crept by something, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I do wonder like long term about the whole Baku Gen comparison, particularly for the card and standard. Mm-hmm. But um, Renathal has been around for like six weeks. I think it's a little early for that. But, uh, you know, projecting forward, like let's check in in next expansion. Like, is it still going to be the same thing where Renathal is like half the decks in the format? Because if that's still the case, ooh, it feels a little, uh, I don't know, it feels a little samesy, a little dicey. But, um, you know, that's a, that's a long time away. Yeah, well, we're not even at that point right now where Renathal is in every nah. deck in the format. So we've got, we got a while nah. to go. But, uh, but that's going to wrap up today's episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the discussion. Uh, nerfs, buffs couple of decks renathal specifically and again we'll, we'll be bringing you guys all all the details uh on the next episode post patch specifically talking about all the buffs the impacts of the nerfs and uh maybe our experiments with some renathal i guess that's our that's our homework for the week we all got to play some renathal decks and, and figure oh, out come the... on man <laughs> uh, yeah all right i'll play druid i guess yeah oh, okay. that doesn't count <laughs> come on um but yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed the episode raffle and corp thanks again for joining me uh let the people know where they can find you and your renathal content uh yeah you can find me on twitch and youtube at raffle and twitter and instagram at raffle hs and you can find me doing my homework at corbett uh on twitch and corbett games on twitter and youtube yes you can find me at get me up on all those platforms as well 
Thanks to everybody that listens all the way to the end. Appreciate y'all. And we will see you guys again next time. Later.